All right. It is a it is a great pleasure. When Robbie asked me, I, I started doing some things a while back, um, doing some audio video stuff for this thing. So we have cool graphics and just make this thing look really network and pop because you guys all deserve it. A lot of you traveled a very long way and we thank you. But when I, I found out <laughs> that our next speaker was gonna be here, I was, I was like, no way. And I started looking more of his stuff up and I was like, whoa. And I really truly believe that you all are gonna be very surprised if you have not seen him speak and if you're not familiar with what he's gonna do. But you're in for a, a wonderful treat. So please welcome all the way from Argentina and thank you for helping getting him here because it's been a wonderful experience for him, I'm sure. But meeting him yesterday, when here's how, here's how humble this guy is. When I first got here, or got, got up the next day, I saw this guy, and I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I saw this guy sitting in this chair with a blanket over him, crashed out in the lobby never complained about anything but they they kind of had a mess up with his room or waiting for his room or whatever he didn't say a word i find out later I, I was like should i put a cup down there and people can start putting money in this thing for this guy <laughs> and then I, I you know i got a decent look at him i'm like i don't know who this guy is and then all of a sudden when he got up and he's walking around i'm like wait a minute he looks familiar and he goes hi i need you like you're in landucci he's like yeah the guy didn't even eat for over 24 hours. He never said a word to anybody. Just humble, just hanging out. And now I'd just like to bring him to the stage because he's, like I said, he came a long way from home. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Really do. So, welcome. This is Uri Lambucci. Thank you for the presentation. Okay. Uh, I'm a little nervous, maybe you noticed that. Um, well, first of all, thanks to everybody to be here. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's a dream come true for me. Be in this conference, I think the, the first one in the last uh, 12,000 years, because uh, I don't think that I did um, before. So it's, a, it's an honor to represent um, the thoughts and the feelings of uh, the Spanish language people because this is also a reality in that kind of um, part of the world. Uh, so I hope you like my presentation. Maybe you're going to notice that I am uh, forget some words or some uh, kind of that stuff. So I'd like to start. Um, I bring up. Uh, could you put the slide? Okay. That one for if I don't have any people to introduce me. So uh, I bring my, I used to be a fan of Star Wars, so I have my saber laser to, you know, <laughs> to save the world. Um, so I'm going to start with the general approach. I, I have a lot of slides, so maybe I, I, I don't have the time to cover everyone. Uh, but what well, I'm going to try to do the, the, the best. So uh, I shut it down. Perfect. Okay. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Um, there is. Well, my name, as you may uh, know it, is Irulanducci. I have 36, uh, 36 years old. I born in La Plata. It's a city near to Buenos Aires. I work like a visual effect technical director uh, from 20 years. And uh, I also uh, I am a motion graphic designer. So. That is my background on professional work. And as uh, a researcher, I am since 12 years that I um, be aware that the, the government is not what they tell us. So I start to research the new world order. Uh, and four years ago, I come approach with the flatter reality. So that's blown my mind. And um, I am, you know, 24 uh, hours studying the, the flatter things. So I have my own radio show in, in my country, and I'm also um, studying uh, shamanic medicine. If uh, anybody doesn't know what it is, I really recommend you. Uh, and I'm also a um, specialist in rituals and symbols and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to 
also present that that kind of things. This is my YouTube channel. It's a very uh, small channel with uh, 30,000 people uh, following the channel. All, of course, the, the majority is uh, Spanish language, but I have my, my um, hangout with other uh, persons around the world, of course, with Globusters, with Bob, with Cheram. Um, I also have my hangout with Santos Bonacci, with Antonio Subirat, so uh, I learned a lot from these guys, so I really appreciate that uh, the opportunity that they, they give me to be part of the, of the way. And um, for me, everything is, uh, my objective, um, because I am a guy who, who have their the own uh, talk show and things like that, so my objective with the Flat Earth was trying to get out of the YouTube box uh, and trying to present to real people and, and trying to put in the media and use the, the, the same weapons that they use against us. So, the, you know, uh, to, that was the idea. So, uh, I have very lucky because uh, um, a very famous famous actor in Argentina called Gaston Pols, uh, who make even a movie here in Hollywood called Antibody. Is that movie? Okay, my laser go down. Perfect. <laughs> Star Wars power. This uh, this movie he make here in Hollywood, and uh, Hollywood also make a remake a remake of his movie called Nine Queens, but here called Criminal. So he is a very famous person in, in Argentina, and also a Star Wars fan. Uh, but he come aware of the flat air, so he changed their mind, and he gave me the opportunity in his radio show to present to the audience the flat air reality. So, so, so as soon as I made that, uh, the newspaper in Argentina start to make fun of the, uh, here's the eccentric people that still believe the air is flat, you know, that kind of uh, uh, heading. So after that um, radio talk show, I start to be participate in other radio shows from Argentina, very important radio shows and TV programs and things like that. So uh, the, the movement start to grow very quickly uh, thanks to to Gaston Pauls. So uh, the, the 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 things reach a, even a point that the university of my city, the university of uh, geophysics and astronomic science. Uh, he make um, a letter and sent to the TV program where, uh, when, where I was participate to, to try to shoot me down. Uh, instead of uh, sending some guy to refute me or show uh, why the Earth is uh, a sphere. So that is the, the, the kind of um, procedure that they use. So how I can be a flat Earth, how I, I become a flat Earth? Well, for me, the most uh, things was the, the more important thing was this kind of uh, stuff. You, of course, you are going to know what I'm talking about. It's this kind of stuff, my friend. If I say that the world is round and someone else says it's flat, is it Columbus said sail? They must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. We don't have time for a meeting of the Flat Earth Society. Let me just underscore. You don't need to be a scientist to know that the Earth is round. And we need to make clear that those members of the Flat Earth Society... The, the current members of the Flat Earth Society in Congress... Uh, we got some people at high levels of aspiration who are the Flat Earth. We have Flat Earth Caucus. The Earth isn't flat. The other breaking news, the world is round, not flat. <laughs> and you don't need to be a scientist. And we need, as responsible leaders, to take account of science. So we prepared a contingency communications procedure. And guess what? We don't need that. There should be a legitimate debate between whether the Earth is round or flat. Because after all, any idiot can walk outside and, walk out and see what it's flat. Like this. Is NASA lying to us? <laughs> well, uh, for me that was the, the, the beginning because I, 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 I start asking me myself why these people are trying to, to say that the world isn't uh, flat. What's going on? We are in 2015, so why the, is there this debate out there? 
So that was the, the starting point to start research. And I came across with, uh, you know, few few things that caught my attention. For example, one in four Americans think that the sun goes around the Earth. Uh, surveys says that. And one in third Russian guy thinks the same. So you have 400 uh, million of uh, people here. So <laughs> 100 million people is a lot of people. So I, I assume that in that range of people there is going to be engineering, astronomers, astrophysics, uh, regular people, so uh, that can be uh, that, uh, that people that can be nuts and crazy. So I, I started to to try to understand why they think that the suns uh, revolve around the the Earth and on the other way. So um, I'm going to go with a little inside the rabbit hole. So uh, like the title of uh, David Weiss YouTube channel. Um, so in my country. Um, we are totally under the control of the Freemasonic Jesuit orders and Zionist uh, agenda, like you are also here. You can recognize because uh, that this is Washington, but this is Buenos Aires. We have the eyes of Horus. Uh, when you see from the top in the principal uh, capital city, we have the, the obelisk. And this is my city. My city is one of the, is exactly equal to Washington, in fact, is one of the most Masonic cities in my country. So I have to live with, you know, a lot of symbolic every day <laughs> than when I walk around my city. So, uh, of course, there is a, a symbolic uh, meaning be, behind the, the obelisk, and that is why they use now the, to try to penetrate the, the Mother Earth, the, the, the Osiris Fault. That is the symbolic thing that why they use these kind of rockets. Uh, it's all about the, the worship in the sun. I have in my city, I have an, ast an observatory, a planetary, and of course the Jesuit order, uh, you know, present all the day. In fact, the, the, the thing came also, for example, the, the police guys in the Buenos Aires uses uh, symbolic symbols like the Aleister Closely uh, Lodge and things like that. And of course, nobody understands why they use this kind of laws. Um, I, we, we have the, the most Jesuit <laughs> person in the world, which is the Pope, and this is the Pope when he was young, using a, you know, a Black Sabbath, uh, Black Saturday t-shirt, so you can see the background of this guy. Um, in my city, we have the museum, uh, of course, the, the museum is also running by Jesuit, they, they, they priest like Darwin, you know, they are putting on the walls, and uh, of course, they have the, when you enter to the museum, you have all the culture to... Egyptians, you know, uh, um, cultural Egyptians. So you are present in every aspect of the of the life, and of course we have lodge, uh, Masonic lodge. And the funny thing is, when you enter into the Masonic lodge, uh, they asking for faith to science, which is in the own Lima, or uh, the, the own words inside. This is a big picture of this part of the image, and here it says faith in science. And when you start to research, you understand why they put faith in everything that presents us, because it's the only way you can believe it, this <laughs> kind of thing. So uh, that is why they, you know, uh, they ask for the initiations uh, to pay uh, faith. And when you start to research, you, you come across that uh, every hero in the science history is all Masonic, everyone. Uh, there is no even one. Of course, this kind of line never exists that are fairy tale stories, but the, 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 the person, the people that maybe, maybe exist, they don't even have the, the real name. For example, Newton is a symbolic name to New Aton, which means New Sun. And that is why he used names like Isaac, because it's the action of Isis for the New Sun. So when you're starting to research, all the names have, have a symbolic meaning. I don't have time to go uh, each one, but you can see how they use the, the symbol in every aspect. Of course, the NASA guy, I think they are the most expert in uh, do the, all kind of stuff with in, uh, involve uh, symbolic things, right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah, here, here we have uh, the, the extreme, the extreme uh, symbolic thing with the Baphomet tat tattoos in, the, in his arm. So the NASA is full of this kind of uh, symbolic things. So, uh, for example, this is a guy of uh, an astronaut, astronaut, 
uh, from Brazil, and he's also in Masonic Lodge. Uh, of course, everyone see the, the all, how how they 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 love they love uh, of us, no? The mocking. They even have uh, they they have also the the the, the, the patents and the credit uh, the credentials to be uh, Masonic. So there's nothing new on that kind of thing. But when you start to see, for example, the the, the, the supposedly real science it, uh, scientists, you, you you start to notice that they are all founded by Jesuits and by Jewish people, bankers. And if you go back in time, you're going to see that the Jesuit order at the beginning of the 15th century also was founded by the Orsini, um, the Medici. Uh, so it's all the same. There are every, it's, it's a fractal of the past uh, in our days. And of course, when you, for example, start to understand that the Big Bang Theory is not uh, created by a scientist, but it's created by the priest, you, you need to ask yourself what's going on here because if I, I, I'm going to go to the science, why is all the time intervened by religious people? So you start to, to, to realize that even Einstein could detect that the Earth is moving. No, no one, because of course it's not moving. That is why they can detect it, but uh, <laughs> there is nothing new also in that. And of course they have, for example, this is a, a wall in uh, uh, European agency space. So, you, you, can, you can see how all this connection goes uh, really deep. We have Jean, uh, Jean-Luc Picard with Bernard von Braun uh, before they, they, they say, okay, this is the limit, the sky is the limit. Uh, and you can see the connection with the uh, Disney family and today the Disney family is Pixar, so they make a lot of computer animation. And then, the, for example, the books that they sell in to the, the young people in the 50s is the same that they sell today. So it's a fractal all the time. You can see how they mock us all the time with the Disney face in everywhere. And of course, they have the Walt Disney Educational Educational Media Company. So that is a, a little strange. You can see, for example, in the beginning of the 60s, how they prepared the community to accept the moon landing and how Monsanto is uh, uh, in conjunction with Walt Disney, creating the inner space adventure, for example. This is a totally brainwash. There are a lot of videos uh, speaking with that. Of course, in that time, Disney History Institute, no educational, educational media center. Um, even uh, some kind of other programming, Julio Verne, which is a Masonic guy, uh, he prepared the, 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 the people for accepting the dinosaurs, the, earth, the, the core of the earth, the moon landing, and a lot of other things. But in his book, he used a flat horizon. You know, a little strange, <laughs> my friend. Sorry, because some slides I don't have time to translate, so you're going to learn uh, a little bit of Spanish in real time. So we have also, we, we, we can see also, for example, the, the, um, uh, the, the rituals inside the founder of NASA, like Chuck Parsons. They don't even hide. They, Wikipedia uh, himself uh, tell us that the, he was an Ordo Templis Orientis, which is a disciple of Aleister Crowley. They make uh, pornography about the rockets because that is very useful to enter inside the mind using feelings. So a sexual feeling is a very powerful feeling to brainwash. And when we talk about that NASA have actors uh, participating inside the uh, space, not the engineering outside that work in other kind of, of stuff, it's because they are really actors. They are even have credentials like actors. No, no it's not a joke. It's they, they are really actors. And of course, they have also exchange actoring because <laughs> they, they, they like to dress like a Jesuit sometimes. Uh, they use pre-programming, you know, uh, characters. So this kind of stuff is really, really, uh, it's going really deep to trying to brainwash us. And when you're trying to find some real scientists on the media television, you also notice that they are actors because they are actors. <laughs> uh, so you can see how the, the, the clothes that they use have also symbolic symbols worship in the sun, and um, for example, something that caught my attention was in this clip of the Curiosity landing. Look at that technology, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> and, and you can see here this guy, this guy, when I see this guy the first time I say, hey, this is a Snowden? It's real Snowden? So, I don't know, I can't tell you, yes, 100% he's a Snowden, but He's really, uh, he's really, uh, you know, have that the similarity. So maybe that's 
he's also an actor. That is why Russian never, <laughs> you know, Russia and the United States are the, a friend in the space with China, you know. In Antarctica and the space, there are no war. A really, really strange thing. So, of course, they are all controlling by the media. These are, these are channels, broadcasting channels of my country, and also they use the 666, the Eye, the Sun, the Jesuit Sun, etc., etc., etc. And of course, they have that important because the, the nervous system manipulation is controlling an electromagnetic field, which is a, a monitor. And look, the face of that woman is very happy seeing the monitor there. So they, they have, you know, all planning. And for example, this is the history of astronautics in Argentina. You can see the checkerboard Masoni. You can see the Jesuit in the beginning of the 60s. What the fuck are you, he's doing there? <laughs> <laughs> it's a really strange thing, right? Because and uh, uh, and all the kind of um, um, you know independence uh, investigation about the outer space was uh, finished in the beginning of the 90s by the President Menem, because the Terran Stodman, the ambassador from America, come to my country and say, okay, you're going to close the, your agency space and we're going to help you. And that is why uh, we mock uh, him. In fact, the Menem was the first guy to propose what Elon Musk is proposing today, a flight that, you know, in four hours you can be in any part of the world because underneath the Earth is rotating. So. Uh, that was the Todd man was uh, said to my president at that time, and this president was selling all uh, <laughs> Argentina, you know, really crazy. And of course, we have our satellites here, for example, and, and, and we need to pay $260 million to repair in the 90s. So I, I think, uh, what, someone goes up in the space, take the satellite, go down, repair, and then put it back again. <laughs> but we pay, but we pay. So, then the, the you can see a little bit of uh, the kind of uh, stuff that how. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I, I need to go. I, I, I really need to go fast because it's not I'm going to end. So, but we are not alone. That is something that I come aware when you started, you know, start to think in other kind of uh, scientists out there that really make the the, the things. Uh, they give, they, they give uh, they experiments to, to us to try to prove uh, that the Earth is stationary. So everyone knows the michelson morley experiment, the Sagnac experiment. Um, for example, the, the Foucault pendulum, uh, when I become aware, thanks to Mr. Hiban Trident Survivor, I, I can't remember the, the names of the channel, uh, with the alias effects, this is the alias effects, uh, proven by University on the, of Spain, you know, you have the pendulum clock, you know, just going go back and forward. So what happened? The Earth is, was stopped in that moment. So that is the kind of things that the regular people try to use to debunk the movement of the Earth or things like that, like, like that. And of course, we have our Spanish people creating and writing books about that the Earth is not moving. And of course, some uh, science portal uh, take that notice and try to, you know, to, to, to put that out there for the for the regular people. And of course, our universe is totally electrical. That is no doubt about it. You, you have a lot of guys uh, today speaking about that. Uh, for example, this is experiment made by the Thunderbolt uh, project guys who recreate uh, geophysics uh, terraforming based on electricity with granite, you know, with, with granite. And you can see how the moon, la the moon, for example, the crater of the moon, there are no trails to the meteorite impacts. So they are all, all perpendicular impacts here also. So you can notice that how in love they can reproduce this with electricity. So there is no doubt that our world is completely electric, electrical. Um, of course, if you want, you can send some uh, meth me meteors. Um, um, I, I forget to show the, the meteor shower based on electrical forces, sorry. But if you want some artificial meteorite, you can buy it uh, to a company who send you to your garden, to your backyard. Um, of course, we have the sprites, for example. This is our, a lot of a study. And if you can look here, look the limit. This is in the top of the atmosphere. So you can see the limit and the electricity can go up because our, um, our atmosphere is composed by some, a lot of gases. But one of those gases, which is the sexafluoruro, um, uh, gas 
he, th this gas is uh, shooting down all electricity, is, doesn't have any color, it doesn't have any, it's a helium free uh, type of liquid up there. So that is why they can get, go out even the, uh, the own electricity. And we have that kind of things uh, that determine this is a symbolic because this is the real serpent of the knowledge. The Aurora Borealis have that energy that, you know, it, it's, it's when you close your eyes and make some wishes, you also trying to find your black sun because the black, the black sun is the real manifestation sun. The white sun is for give energy, but the manifestation properties come from the from the dark, if you wanted to see in that way. If you press your eyes, you're gonna see also like little sparks, uh, green color, blue color. So that is uh, the, the real power inside uh, our system to manifest and create reality. That is why they use, you can see here, this is the Aurora Borealis, this is the moon, and this is the white sun and the black sun. It's all a system, it's nothing, you know, it's not the black sun, it's not the bad sun. Uh, that is what, what they tell. Good afternoon, uh, tell, my name tell, is... Sorry. That is uh, what they tell to us to, uh, you know, to get away of that kind of knowledge. But the real knowledge is that there is nothing out there in our planet that is bad. Uh, all is a system very balanced, uh, there are equilibrium. We have Don Scott, for example, talking about the electric sun. My name is Don Scott. Uh, the electric sun is a is a sort of a natural outgrowth of the electrical universe hypothesis. We know that there are magnetic fields. Well, um, I, I just, sorry for the, uh, the audio interruption, um, but if you want to see more about the electric sun and that kind of stuff, you can search for your own, the um, Don Scott uh, uh, explanation. There seems to be a new model, because at least the, another patch. The, on um, the, you know, the, 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 the geocentric model is uh, part of our is, least, is not uh, have any kind of sense how they did, how the they, they tell us that it works, this so term of fusion, nuclear reason. reaction, that kind of and stuff. And I would like to really, then... It's, a, it's, it's like talking about angels, you know, things like that. And some engineers and some guys, uh, they know that this uh, is a little trick. So they start to spoke uh, in conference in Europe and uh, they, they are doing a great job to try to uh, give another kind of um, information. So, for example, you can see the, this is, for example, uh, what time is it? Um, you, you may think that this is the, mid the, the midday or the, the afternoon. Can you put play, please? So if you compare this, this is a, a lighting. Uh, if the light comes from a lighting, so uh, the sun has the same properties to give us light. Uh, so I don't know if... Uh, can you put play? There is. So it's a lighting storm. So uh, that is why the cameras need to make a white balance any time they film outside, because we have that, uh, you know, that uh, light blue uh, enter into the lens because it's electrical light. Of course, if you put fire beside a plant, the plant is just gonna die and dry. But if you put a, you know, a lighting bulb beside the plant, the plant is going to grow up. And uh, all our body, the, you know, the molecules, the ADN in our bodies, they, uh, all is electrical. So that is why we need the sunlight. Um, of course, if you compare, for example, lighting arcs with the so-called uh, um, flares, sun flares, you're going to see very quickly that uh, it's more like electrical than fire. Um, so, of, of course, we have guys like Faraday, Gauss, uh, you know, uh, uh, Hertz, Ampere, a lot of scientists of the uh, 18th century who, who discovered this kind of energy. And we, today we have the plasma, uh, what they call, you know, uh, they, they don't really want to recognize that this is uh, for the ether, because the, the, the ether is eternal, you know, it's all, all is the ether, uh, there is no, no ether. Uh, that is why the sound, the energy, the electromagnetic field can fly uh, and um, uh, we come here. Of course, we have even uh, people uh, about NASA to complain about the, the Big Bang theory that never happened. That is why, you know, when you start to realize, look at this guy, Halton Harp, with the Tesla uh, invention, trying to give the, the hint of uh, the, the universe is electrical. The Big, the big Bang is just a uh, uh, fairy tale history. And 
you notice why these guys are so, you know, uh, persecuted? Because this is what happened. The, the Jesuits and the Jews control all the science, education, health, uh, you know, everything. So when you are a real scientist and, and you start to see how these people are really inside of all the science, you, you piss off, of course. We have the limits, Ushuaia, called the end of the world. And I ask myself, why is it going to be the end of the world if it's a sphere? It doesn't have any sense, but if you are <laughs> looking in the Gleason map and you see Antarctic, and we are the most country beside Antarctic, that is why Ushuaia is called the end of the world. Uh, some guys say, okay, what happened with the water? Why they, they, what, what is the edge and that kind of stuff? And there are people that realize that the Antarctic is the most highest continent in the world. Uh, the Antarctic, when you enter to the coast of Antarctic, very soon it's going to rise up uh, 2,500 meters, uh, you know, uh, promedy of the continent. So that is why the balloons uh, very quickly go up the, the clouds. You can see the NASA balloon with the flat horizon in the Antarctic. So where is the curve? That's uh, something that need to, you know, make, make uh, pay attention to this kind of thing. So that is why the, uh, when you talk about the wall of Antarctic, there is isn't any wall because uh, the, the, the iceberg that's floating around the, on the water, that's just iceberg. The real wall is because this uh, uh, rise up 2,500 meters. And of course, the technology of the human race is very far away from the technology of the creation. So we can penetrate the Antarctic. That is the real thing. Um, so they keep it totally controlled with military bases, with treatments, and that kind of stuff. And all the circumnavigation around the world was made west to east. So you don't have other, um, you know, other choice. Uh, of course, the land inside the Antarctic is also a real great place to fake Mars. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> this is a guy from NASA telling us that. And the, the, there is no audio, but uh, he's telling, okay, this surface is the better to uh, test our machines if uh, any time we're going to go to the Mars. So you can see how the things start to, to connect. And um, let me keep going. I have 15 minutes left. Um, so, for example, this is uh, by Argentina expeditions trying to, to pass, you know, to, to make a trip in Groenlandia, which is the Arctic. And this is just what they do. They, they can go inside the Groenlandia, the Greenland, you know. So, uh, you can start to see the limits. This is, for example, a, a abandoned base from the Cold War. So, they don't have any interest in that. Maybe I think they, they, they take away the attention from Arctic because there is maybe the real, you know, paradise, Shambhala, Agartha, etc., etc., etc. So they, they can allow to enter there because they are like demons. So they go to the inverno, to the cold areas. Uh, and that cold areas are, of course, the Antarctic. But uh, I don't think that nobody can access uh, right away to the Arctic. So they, they distract us. Uh, showing these uh, things in Antarctic. Of course, everybody knows the super deep uh, cola hole. That is the limit to going down, 12 kilometers. Even the, the ExxonMobil trying to reach a more deep uh, on the ground, but they, they, they can do it. It's a lot of information about this um, study. Uh, we can put audio, please, for this one. I don't know why it is, why it's not audio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put it again. This is it, very important. Uh, the audio? There's a section of abyssal plane, kind of flat line. This is from Yale University, section. and when flat he teaches to the... Um, All the deep blue is abyssal plane. <coughs> so this About is abyssal plane, uh, go you down deep it. five kilometers, and all this a lot is, of places. is flat. So all this blue is flat. And this is the abyssal plain. Look here, uh, Africa to South America, totally flat. How how thousand kilometers are there? So what is the the, the curve underwater? You know. So of course this guy is not teaching flat earth, but when you start to see these uh, details in the regular you know uh, studies, you can see how the, the things start to. Uh, of course, anyone knows maybe the the submarine that 
can't go down uh, in the Marianne's um, uh, underwater zone. Um, I, I'm going quickly because I don't going to finish the presentation. So uh, that's are the limit. This is the guy who dies, uh, who filming the underwater limit, uh, die on the accident of helicopters in Australia. A little strange. Um, so after all, the water is always level. We have, for example, the city of Venezia, uh, who have 400 square kilometers totally at the sea level, for example. I don't know, you can try to find any example of the cool water, you're going to find none. So if you start to think in, an, uh, okay, what, at what altitude you need to use uh, the, the, to see the curve, you can do it by the Pythagorean method, by Samuel Robson method, by Bhaskara, the Indian mathematician's method. You can find the, the same result. Of course, this is not uh, really accurate, but for the thousand of kilometers, it's really a good measurement. So when you're trying to ask even, uh, like Google, uh, the, the scientist magazine is going to tell you that the, at 20 kilometers, the curve of the air is totally perceptible and no doubt. So when you start to see balloons and rocket launches, this is, these are rocket launches uh, compilation and these are balloon compilations, and it's flat. You know, there is not, not, not any curve. Some of these video has a lens correction, of course, because they are with GoPro. And uh, it's all, all the time is flat. And then there is no any curve out there. And of course, the, the physics and the optic is going to tell us that with the camera, um, you know, uh, the range of the visible uh, of the camera of uh, the human eyes is going to end, obviously, is going to end in a circular uh, Limitation, that is what we call angle of view. If you're talking about angles, you're talking about circular things. So uh, this is uh, the, the most far away that the camera can capture the light. But sometimes you're going to see flat, sometimes you're going to be like circular, but very far away to see a curve. And we're talking about 120 kilometers in that kind of field. And look at this, this balloon. From this point to this point, you can see thousands of kilometers. Look at the real clouds mixing and changing that, that that's something never shown is in the ISS. The ISS is always the, the cloud totally stick, <laughs> you know, never moves, nothing like that. And we have time lapse about six hours because they need six hours to move a, a robotic arm and the clouds never change. So you can start to compare real stuff with, uh, uh, you know, tricks about uh, Hollywood tricks using by trick people. So, of course, we have another kind of limit uh, uh, to test the limits with the operations, uh, military operation via USA and via Russia, and both uh, reach the same limit of uh, 8,000 kilometers, um, 80 kilometers, sorry. And uh, maybe some of these explosions are fake or, are, you know, composite, but they use symbolic name to try to, to get out, you know, the tor, the hammer of the tor to try to break the glass. And you can see some explosion that uh, take the form of donuts because they can go up because it's all this pressure of the atmosphere. So look, if that explosion can go up, I don't think a rocket can get out. And this is the, the gas that I'm talking about. This is a really interesting topic. I don't have time to show you, but have in mind, this gas is five times more dense than the air. And uh, he, th th this gas has a present of uh, 3,200 years each time a bull can make eruptions, for example. So can you imagine that how many much of these gases up there? <laughs> it's a lot of gas. Um, so you can see how they trick us, for example, this is our rocket launches. You can see the rocket launches is all the time. If you see for a really long perspective, you can see how the, the, the rocket go in a straight line. Of course, you, you, if you are in the place, you're going to see how, for example, this is a view for the frontal view. You can see how the rocket comes into the view. Uh, down, you can see how the rocket go far away in this arc motion. But uh, when SpaceX and these guys trying to, to show how they're going to put an orbit, a satellite orbit, they, they, they are in this mode. They go in a straight line. And um, um, I'm waiting for the video to... Reach. So if you see, for example, this is from a balloon, 
this is from a plane, and this is from the ground, and this is from the camera on the rocket. This is from the CR CRS-7 from SpaceX, and that is the rocket trying to get out. I don't know why, where, because there is a lot of land to try to <laughs> go off the curve. And here you can see the flat horizon and how this uh, rocket is traveled in a straight line, simply as that. So, if you compare with, for example, the power of a telescope, a telescope, uh, if you put it in a horizontal line, you're not going to see more than 50 kilometers. So when they, they're pointing up there, uh, at the last moment that the rocket, you know, um, lit, uh, drop away the, the, the principal booster and that kind of stuff, that rocket is at least at 60 kilometers, no more. So that is the way they, they need to, to cut off uh, the video and put some uh, uh, Google Earth animation and that kind of stuff. This, this, this uh, rocket launcher, they, they don't reach more than 40, 50 kilometers at, at much. And there is a company called Flatline, a real, <laughs> Flightline, a real strange name, who has this uh, telescope to film in, and they, they, if you enter to their web page, they, they can reach it with this camera more than 20, 30 kilometers. So that, in, at that point, this, this uh, flight, this spacecraft is supposedly uh, 20,000 kilometers per hour to, you know, to escape the gravitational force. Uh, it's really a, a crazy thing. So the limits maybe could be 100 to uh, 250 kilometers going up. The sides is the limit by the Antarctic perimeter. The center is the Arctic and down we have also 12 to 50 kilometers. That is the most thing that we can do in you know, material world. In the spiritual world, maybe you can go a little more far away. Um, six minutes. So I'm going to pass really quickly this one. Sorry for, if you like, after the presentation, you can ask me for anything you want. So because I am computer animation, uh, I used to work uh, for History Channel, for UNESCO and other companies. And they asked to my studio to make a lot of things about the space satellites, a spherical world, that, that are, are my portfolio. Uh, at that time, of course, I, I didn't know that this is all a, a lie. Every, everyone knows that the all I composite is CGI. Uh, everybody knows that uh, even the, the own NASA tell us that it must be Photoshop because they don't have any, a, a, any other chance. And they fake all this kind of stuff, not just for the spherical Earth. They, they also use uh, CGI to present as the uh, the star field, the galaxy, the new planet that discover every week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that is a, a really amazing uh, thing. We have Robert Hart working by NASA, trying to. And they, they they show they show the thing. We have the you know the the friendship companies working together like uh, Adobe with the pyramid in the logo, or Autodesk with the pyramid in the logo, or Microsoft with the pyramid inside Micro and Soft. And you can see how this, the, these families work together to, to trick us. This is, for example, a, a little earth that I made myself uh, in a few couple of, of hours uh, in the 3 Studio Max. You can see I can use this uh, as a background for any kind of, of video. So they, it's very easy to, to create this kind of stuff. And uh, of course, the first images uh, or the supposed photographs, because one thing is a photograph, another thing is an image. Image come from imagination, and photograph is supposedly to be real objects. Uh, the, the first one are these ones, uh, but how they make it at that time? Because they, at, that, at that time there is no CGI, of course. So they use matte painting. This is a very uh, common technique used in Hollywood called matte painting. Of course, in our days, is digital matte painting. But you can see, for example, um, the, even the, 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 the patterns of the method. Uh, this is a pattern from 1905, very long time ago, how they used on NASA to painting the earth, then they painting the clouds, and they filming, and there you go, your non-CCI uh, moon landing and other kind of stuff at that uh, decade. Um, so you have all the patterns, how they, uh, of course they, they tell it's a simulator, but when you compare it to reality, it's really, <laughs> you know, it's like the reality. You have this guy, this guy was the, the Russian Hayward was the guy who made the, uh, the, the miniatures for the land, for the moon landing, and he works with Walt Disney, and he also is an alchemist. 
he believed in ether. That, uh, this is a book from this guy. He created the projection screen that they use also uh, Stanley Kubrick in the fake moon landing. So you can see how uh, these families uh, work together. Um, they, they, they also have even, you know, uh, apparatus and method for simulating the spacecraft erosion. So they have all the simulations for faking everything. And why in the past the images uh, looks more realistic? Because they use miniatures and they photograph the miniatures. So that is more realistic than today because today we need to live with CGI. The only problem is that uh, it's very difficult to emulate the reality, the light bounces and that kind of stuff. So the, in the past it was more easy because they just photograph uh, real objects and then composite uh, with matte painting. So when you start to see the method using, you, you, you start notice the, the method like self-locomotion system, which is impossible to predict uh, um, a behavior, a physic behavior, before you go to the moon landing in the, in, in, in the lab. And when you start to compare, you're gonna see the same kind of behavior. So that's just a crazy thing. No, nobody can believe that this guy, the dust is falling is for in real time and the guy is, is trying to stay uh, uh, up, you know. If you go down like this, it, 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 it's, it's, really, it's really, you know, if you start to compare the things, you're gonna notice that it, there is a lot uh, of uh, inconvenient thing. We have the gaspy plane, uh, and this, the pattern of the gaspy plane is for reduced gravity conditions airplane. So this is a huge plane to emulate whatever environment inside of this plane. I don't say that this is 100% the ISS, but you have space there to fake a little things. And uh, of course, if you start to compare with other methods, uh, uh, the, the magician of um, this guy is also Freemasonic. So they work together. Uh, when you start to see, the, you start to compare, to compare the, the method of the astronaut, you, you're gonna realize that some, when, they, the, when they go live, they use uh, you know, harnesses. Uh, here you have the patent. This guy is stuck trying to make this. <laughs> <It's unfair. Yeah. laughs> this guy is falling down quickly. And um, it's really, you know, I, I make computer animation, so I, I know how this is doing, how they're doing this. So for me, it was, you know, I never see it before. Uh, that is uh, why I never wake up um, to this reality. But they use all the kind of tricks that they. they it's amazing. Uh, I have more material, but my time's run out. So um, the last thing, for example, uh, we can see. Yeah, no, there are totally clowns. Um, you can see here. Why is a gorilla? You know, in the space, uh, that kind of things. This is very, you know, that that one of my favorites because you, here you can see really that how they touch the wires and you know there is. Um, and this guy, for example, why they pick up a baseball in the space to distract us from see this woman who is, uh, you know, pulling by the cable. So uh, they, they can replicate everything uh, they want in CGI, in uh, zero G planes, and it's very, it's very, you know, uh, it's very easy for me to, to trick us. I get out time, but. Um, well, the control remote is not uh, working anymore. So um, the last thing, the, the, the last two, two minutes, please. Uh, for example, Google Earth is made by world-class uh, Bexel camera, aerogrid systems. They, they map in all the Earth with planes. And if you compare, for example, with the method using in satellite, you will notice that this is real and this is, is a show. Because this is a world-class system. They have this kind of company all around the planet. So they synchronize all the informations, and uh, that is why they, they make, you know, uh, there is all controlled by CIA. They, all the images that they, that, that they took, they need to supervise by the other agency before putting on the public. So we have the drone technology. It's, uh, it's very easy in those days to, to fake uh, the things. Of course, they construct the satellites, but they put it up in the balloon, and the rest is of the fiber optics, uh, ionosphere bouncing. Uh, so there is, a, there is very, very, um, you know, um, when, when you see that, that those uh, white point up there in the sky, if you start to compare, 
are balloons. Of course, at this altitude, for example, you can see the equipment of the satellite. And this little point is a real big equipment. And look at uh, a 50 kilometers, you don't even able to see anymore. And these balloons rise up to 40 kilometers because sometimes they use super pressure balloons. So um, there is no any satellite up there in orbit. Yes, there is uh, hanging on the balloons and things like that. So I need to go. My time go out. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs> He can come over and visit you at your house. You can call. Aye, aye, Mama Queen. Okay, okay. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a special in, in the night if you want. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, all the way. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I'm still nervous. Thanks for coming, Eric. I told you. Okay, thank you. Love you. I told you. How many of you have seen him speak before? Anybody? How many of you were blown away? Nobody. Thanks.